want to change? Sorry. <laughs> sorry. Right? Sorry. This is Mark and Charity's Coffee Podcast. Mark and Charity Coffee Podcast, Friday, woo, woo. February the 18th. It is the Friday of a long weekend in Ontario. <sighs> Monday is what we call Family Day, if you're listening outside of Ontario and thinking, well, that sounds civilized. It's a day to celebrate time with your family. Which we all... By sending the kids outside to exactly. play. Now, go away for a while. I'd say we're almost... Family doubt. Yeah. <laughs> That's why. <laughs> in was all, some households. This was conceived before, no pun intended, conceived on family, <laughs> before the pandemic when we thought we needed a day just to celebrate and spend time We needed time with a family. long weekend in the winter. Yeah. Because before it was May 2 4, really. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, no, there you are have six. Easter. Easter. You have Easter. But count, May 2 4 yeah. is kind of like the big one. Easter, May 2 4, July 1st, August Civic, Labor Day, and Thanksgiving. Those yes. are the six. Long weekends of summer for me. So it kicks off with Easter, wraps up. See, your with, starts the Easter. Wow. Yeah. Now that, because I, I need to, because you know what? Like, what's today, the 18th? There's only not, uh, 10 more days in winter for me. I know. You March go until the end of first is the great, and it's a Tuesday. It's the greatest day. We had a conversation, what, about a week ago, and you pointed that out. You're like, do you know there's only blah, 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 so many days until the first in of winter. winter? And in you no, know, you said in winter. I said, yeah. what? And I looked at the calendar, I'm like, but the first day of spring isn't until... No, 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 no! no, no. March 1st. <laughs> Winter is over the end of February. Like, okay, Mark. I know. <laughs> and my wife, she does the same thing, but she's just done fighting me. Because once mm-hmm. again, if being stubborn was an Olympic event, I'm the women's Canadian hockey, hockey team. team. I am Absolutely, a gold winner stubborn. Down. And so I've worn her down. That The weather it does not determine winter for me. It's the calendar. That when we get to the 1st of March, it's spring. And, and when it does doesn't it start? matter to me. When does it start for you then if you're going by the calendar? November? Winter? Yes, 1st of November. November so to March. November is four months long. The 1st of November to the 28th of February. Those four months. And it's because we get up in the middle of the night, right? Yeah, it's dark. And it's, so it's just dark all the time mm-hmm. for me. So when we get to the 1st of March, just in my head, now that's that's the rest of my life. Well, and we have said, we've we've talked about this as well, how light it is now in the morning. Mm-hmm. It's getting earlier. And the other night, the kids were out skating, and I had started supper, and I thought, okay, they'll be in soon. But it was still it was still light out, and I happened to glance at the clock, and it was like 10 to 6. Yeah. And it was still light. Yeah. It wasn't just, dark. Just be 5 I o'clock, thought, <gasps> sun goes off. This is good. This is a good sign. Two weeks away from time change again. I know. Again Spring in forward. March. Yep. So yes, and then uh, Violence Awareness, Random Acts of Kindness Week is coming up. Mm-hmm. And that's always a big March thing. Then the March break and then March madness. And there's just joy and giddiness once we get into March. I am pretty excited for March madness. Although you've warned me yeah. that you haven't, haven't you've attention. been focused with football and we've been covering the Olympics the last couple of weeks right. and kind of watching that. I don't so know. haven't looked There's at no clear cut favorite. Basketball at all. Except maybe Gonzaga again. But then they lost in but the finals a, to Baylor it's like, last it, year. Again, it's like women's Olympic hockey. It's like every year, okay? Right. That's kind of the one. Got to pay attention to Gonzaga, who has no other claim to fame other than men's basketball. <laughs> maybe college, they do other cool college stuff. College basketball. College yeah. stuff, yeah. So enjoy your family day long weekend. We want to spend time with one fine family, the Mullinaire family. Yes. Dad Graydon. I had never heard of this. There's a show on the Food Network called Wall of Chefs. That I that I'd kind of heard about. I know they mm-hmm. it's a Food Network. They have a lot of these shows. It's a cooking show, if you weren't <laughs> if the name didn't give it away. But it's not for professional chefs. No, this shines but, a light on home home right. chefs, home but it, cookers. It's not like like a hoarder show. So it's not like they try to get the worst home chefs on and, teach and try them. and make them yeah. better, like Canada's Worst Drivers or something, right? <laughs> that would be a fun show, yeah. though. Like I would like to see that. Chefs. Put them on. Let's like, see if we can teach them something. Who would take me on mm-hmm. on that show as a horrible chef? So he applied and he got on it, and the episode aired this week. So we caught up with Graydon and wanted to know. A, what was it like for his daughter? Yeah. What is his go-to signature? And why did he decide to do it in the first place? Amateur cook, home cooks that are uh, that want to learn more and want to do more with their cooking and show show the world their cooking pretty, pretty much. Um, now, I got on the show uh, by 
a few different just application processes and steps. Uh, it was a pretty pretty lengthy application process, uh, but yeah, I was very fortunate when they uh, kept saying they liked my application. So, and then eventually uh, they they contacted me and just said that they would really uh, really like to have me on the show and asked if I was interested. Pretty much, and it was such a such a crazy moment because I didn't re- I didn't realize that it was real. And then I like sat down for a minute and read the email again, and I was just like, oh my goodness. This is actually happening. <laughs> Pretty exciting. Now, you, you mentioned home cooks, and we do hear that term. So is, is cooking what you do for a living, or is this something no, that no. you just do as, at, at home? Yeah, so for, uh, for now, it's, uh, it's something I've just really taken a love for uh, at home. Like I mentioned in the, in the show, I mentioned uh, that I learned how to cook a lot better when my daughter came to the world. And uh, I've been cooking for a long time and in high school I really took interest in the foods class. I went to Quinney High School here in Belleville and uh, the one year I was in the foods class I actually cooked a giant like barbecue buffalo or barbecue chicken uh, pizza with a bunch of different toppings and it was like literally just this extra large giant pizza (laughs) and I remember uh, I remember it like sold out in like the first like five or ten minutes of lunch and it was such a cool feeling so after that it kind of like made me realize like Wow, I actually, I guess, can cook pretty good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Do you have a signature dish then? Uh, I wouldn't say I have a signature, but like I'm, I've been told that I'm really good at like tacos and pastas, and uh, I'm really good at doing steaks too. I think. <laughs> from what I've heard, anyway. And I like what I eat, make most times. So. Green Moliniere of Belleville on Wall of Chefs. The episode aired uh, on Valentine's night. Is yeah. That on Monday, Monday uh, February 14th. Take us through what happened and what's next for you. So um, it was me versus three other awesome home cooks from around uh, Canada. Uh, so I got there, and uh, I got there the night before kind of thing, and then I had to... Uh, to go to the, the studio the next day and shoot the episode. And, uh, yeah, it was uh, it's pretty much me versus three others in time rounds, and uh, we have to, to go and give it our all for all these uh, amazing, renowned chefs from around the world. Oh, my gosh, that's got to be oh, so hard. pressure. Now, which one of you got chicken fingers and fries? <laughs> <laughs> which one of you got to do yeah. <laughs> which one of you got to do frozen pizza because when I think home especially in the pandemic right everything has yeah. to be easy to make with ingredients I've got around the house I don't think exotic do you think exotic when you yeah, do like how do you gravy? walk like, in there and and come up with this stuff yeah um I just really honestly kind of uh I'm really like I have a huge range of food that I like to use when I'm in the kitchen, so I always like to uh, to change the recipes up and try new stuff. And uh, my daughter's got a really good palate too for a five year old, so she's really good to uh, have help. And she she's a really really good help when it's in, when she's in the kitchen. Like I mentioned, she's the sous chef for sure. Whatever you guys ask, I don't mind answering to when I where I can answer. So then, what did you make? First round, what did you make? Uh, the first round, I made a uh, garlic butter shrimp and mushroom onion linguine. Oh my gosh! <laughs> oh, <laughs> now was that your your do- choosing, or did they tell you to make a pasta dish? So before um, we came to the show for the re- the first round was a crowd pleaser. Um, we had we got to put in a few of our recipes that we thought would be a crowd pleaser that okay. we have been practicing and that we've been good at. Um, and then so they kind of let us know which which of the, the few recipes we sent in that they loved the most, and they had us choose kind of uh, which which one we thought could please the crowd. <laughs> what did your daughter think about her dad being on TV? What was her reaction to you being on the Wall of Chefs? She she kind of double took it. She looked like yesterday after I picked her up from school, um, I knew she was really excited to watch it. So we got to watch it with my mom and whatnot. And uh, she kind of like looked at the TV when she first saw me and looked back over at me and looked <laughs> at the TV again. Kind of like, is this real? <laughs> and uh, yeah, she, she just said, I can't believe this, this is real. Pretty much just kept saying that. And uh, yeah, she's Aww. just super, uh, super excited to, to, for this opportunity for me. Yeah, it's amazing to to feel the love from her for sure. Absolutely. On the Food Network's Wall of Chefs, Belleville's own Graydon Mullinaire. Future means what now? Have you changed your yeah. mind about doing it professionally? 
I would love to, honestly. Like, after hearing all uh, Maximo Capra and Lynn Crawford and, like, Danny Smiles, just a few to mention them, all the chefs I got to cook for. But after hearing the stuff they said about the food that I created for them and made for them, it was so inspiring. And I just, uh, I have uh, lots of ideas on where I want to go next. I just kind of have to uh, finalize a couple plans and ideas and figure out where... uh, where Mr. Mux is going to be next. <laughs> yeah, because sometimes, you know, so much of the drama on some of these shows are that it's not inspiring. It's so degrading. At least that's what they show to entice you to watch the show. But it's good to hear if you're going to put yeah. yourself out there, at least it gives you some direction to improve mm-hmm. rather than just knocking you down for clicks and ratings. That's good to hear. Yeah, no, I mean, I, uh, I can't take criticism. I've always been a pretty uh, tough guy uh, growing up, and I've always loved to just take the... the the hard time and uh, and do something with them, you know? Yeah, so, well, you know, on behalf of all of motivation. your ex-classmates that missed that great pizza, wow. <laughs> so what do you do then, Graydon? <laughs> um, I'm a developmental service worker, so I've been uh, I've been working in the, the group home kind of agency and field for the last uh, five or six years. Wonderful. Oh, well, you're a frontline yeah, worker. Look at you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and you're a kitchen avenger. You're a superhero. In the kitchen. I love that. Love it. (laughs) That's an awesome explanation. (laughs) That's right. We'll have to send you a cape with the big chef's hat. (laughs) I can picture that now. (laughs) (laughs) Great Molinaire of Belleville on Wall of Chefs. Watch for it on the the Food Network or uh, pick it up on demand if uh, if the episode is available that way. See how he makes out. And uh, we wish you all the best. And thanks for being a part of our Mark and Charity Coffee podcast. and, And congrats. Great work. Awesome. Thanks very much, guys. I appreciate you for having me. If you uh, if you want to follow my uh, food journey, it's at Mr. Muxalot on Instagram. Mr. Muxalot. Follow him on Instagram. Maybe he'll make you a meal. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> I, I, I have oh. started following Graydon, and all it is is pictures of food. Yeah. And, this food <laughs> and rightly so. He's, he's become, and I, I'm happy to hear that this finally maybe gives him a little bit of a push to pursue it more. Yeah, because yeah, exactly, exactly. clearly he's enjoy he enjoys it. Clearly mm-hmm. he's good at it. And I'm sorry, if you can get your five year old to eat pretty well anything you're making, yes, you mm-hmm. should be a chef because five year olds are the pickiest eaters out there. So if she's loving it, then yeah. great and you're doing something right. But followed by fifty eight year old husband. <laughs> are the <laughs> second pickiest people. But there just to get them in the kitchen. But yeah. And to be interested, exactly. to stand on the stool and mix a bowl or point something out. I mean, you can get them to do it when you're doing cookies, but it sounds like, as he pointed out, like she's a chef in her own right now. Mm-hmm. She's got that in her head, not just her belly, Yeah, that this is an important skill to have. And so that's that's parroting, that is. And I, I, I'm i surprised. I'm always interested. That's why I asked him, what does he really do? Because yeah. clearly he has yeah. a gift and an mm-hmm. interest in it. So why haven't you done it already? So this is great that it's tough. it yeah. opens the door and, and good things are coming. And it, yeah. it's exciting to see where grading goes with this. I uh, Yeah, I'm, I'm pulling for him. I think mm-hmm. that's, that, that's great. So it's called uh, Wall of Chefs. Watch for that. Because if you were to be in a reality show, could you do something like that where you're being judged by experts? It's one thing to go on a survivor, and, and I'm not minimizing that. And if you if you flare out because you didn't do a challenge, okay. But they're judging you on these shows, like when a Gordon Ramsay or somebody like that. I couldn't do a Gordon and Ramsay show because he, he's yeah. hardcore. I yeah, can't. I, a I, cooking I, show. I am a wow. sensitive soul. That's yeah, that's <laughs> what I mean. It's one thing to. But if it was constructed. But this show isn't. No, and I know. I've watched the show, but a lot and of them this are. isn't attacking. This is yes, you're competing. But what's nice about this show is, and a lot of shows, really, it's only a few that go after yeah. the attack. It, it is to to encourage. And I do find that most of them are very positive. They do point out, okay, yeah, you didn't do this. Yeah, you didn't do that. You could have done this. But this was good about it. And right. this is, yeah. and you know what? You do have a knack. So try to try this next time. I do find the majority of them are very complimentary to and encouraging. Gordon Ramsay is a different kind of. I'll tell you what, though. A different kind of coach. And and here's where it goes off the rails a little bit. There's a big difference between Canadian reality shows and American yes, reality shows. Yes, and I was just going to say that. And I know that because yeah. Kevin O'Leary came to the Empire Theatre here in Belleville. We had him on the show, and I went and watched the show. And uh, so he said, I'm going to show you the difference now between Canadian Dragon's Den mm-hmm. and Americans Shark Tank. And he said, watch the promos. And the... Dragon's Den was like, 
who are the young entrepreneurs that we're going to try and help, right? Yep. You know what? How are we going to help build how the economy in Canada? How are we going Canada? to help right. them? Right. Shark tank us, watch us, chew them up, and spit them out. Yep. So again, it was that whole different idea. Mm-hmm. So if the Food Network in Canada, it's going to be who are the great home chefs that we can help along in their life. Let's spotlight and the, um, these right. incredible people that are not, doing this at home. Not the view south of Detroit. Exactly. Not the case at all. So, And, and I've exactly. seen it with my own eyes with a guy who's done shows in both countries. Mm-hmm. So, great and good work on that. Yeah. His daughter's going to be well. She's going to be just the happiest eater ever. She's going to appreciate it. And I oh. think as we hear again and again and, and with the way we eat and and. This goes hand in hand. When you can enjoy cooking, then you cook good food. True. Yeah. And yep. yes, yep. that's that's what it is. So it's it's <laughs> great to see the father daughter team working at it. I gotta I gotta get off the chicken fingers I know. and fries. Though, I right? know. Hey, oh. I'm there with you, hundred oh. <laughs> percent. You know, I I brag when I make spaghetti. You know. Oh. It's yep. a big one in our house. And Kath will say, hey, you want a roast? Oh, my gosh. Let's like take on a whole day, and we're going to make a roast today. It's a big day. It's a pandemic. It's a big thing. day. Hey, enjoy your family day you weekend. Too. Join us when we get back at it on Tuesday. This is the Mark and Charity Coffee Podcast, uh, now on Amazon Music, as well as Spotify, Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, and linked right to our social media sites out of Belleville, Ontario. A family day weekend. Enjoy it with you and yours from all of us here at 95.5 Hits FM and the Mark and Charity Coffee Podcast.